My name is Jason Nash and I'm a Senior Solutions Architect with Vero. In this demonstration we're going to go through the configuration of a Nexus 5020 to give a new ESX server access to storage on the back end. So we're going to go through the simple fiber channel over Ethernet configuration that you would normally do. So in the lab I've got a 5020 switch uh, which I have right here in front of me, you know the console here. If I do a show modules you'll see that it's pretty simple it's the base 40 10 gig you know 40 port 10 gig in the switch chassis itself and I've got two combination cards here uh, I've got both of them are 4 by 10 gig and 4 by 4 gig fiber channel so I have a total of eight fiber channel connections that I use to trunk over to other switches or in this case uh, the back end is a EMC Clarion CX4 480 or you can even connect host to those just like you would a standard MDS switch so it's kinda up to you but we'll walk through the configuration. Everything we'll be doing here will really be over the fiber channel over Ethernet interfaces. On the VMware side, we're going to configure this little guy here, ESX09. In this server, we have two Emulex CNA adapters. Uh, a CNA adapter is a converged network adapter. It allows you to do uh, 10 gig Ethernet and fiber channel over Ethernet with the same cable. So in this server, we've got two of these cards one connected to the 5020 you just saw, the other connected to another 5020 for redundancy. So you can port channel these things and get an aggregate bandwidth of 20 gig for data and storage. The interesting thing here is that on the VMware side it sees these as standard HBAs and NICs. So right here on the storage adapters you'll see it's an Emulex LP21000 10 gig FCOE CNA. It looks just like a standard fiber channel HBA. You got your worldwide names, your port, and your host and on the networking side network adapters you'll see it's it looks like two Intel 10 gig network adapters so you know everything's good it's up and functioning and really from the VMware side you don't have to do anything different it looks like fiber channel acts like fiber channel zoned like fiber channel so keep that in mind we're gonna go ahead and we'll be doing VM HBA2 if you notice right now there's zero targets devices and paths so we haven't configured anything so to start the configuration, uh, we'll jump over here back to the Nexus. And there's a few things that you have to do first. Uh, when we get through this, you'll see that anybody who's familiar with MDS switches, you know, Cisco MDS, will feel right at home. I'm going to do everything here command line because that's just how I work. Uh, some people like Fabric Manager, and you can absolutely use Fabric Manager with these. But there's a couple things you need to do different from an MDS switch. You do these up front, and once they're done, everything is pretty much downhill. The first one is, if you look here, Feature FCOE. On a Nexus, if you haven't used one, uh, it's similar to a lot of the new switches in that you have to enable a feature before you can use it. It cuts down on memory use, uh, you know, bug issues, conflicts, uh, smaller attack surface, etc. So the first thing I did was turn that on. I created a VLAN. Remember, we're doing fiber channel over Ethernet. And with this, the fiber channel traffic travels in its own VLAN. I use VLAN 420 because I'm going to be using VSAN 420. Uh, makes that nice and easy. And the rest of it is just standard stuff. vSAN databases, um, you know, vSAN entries. Uh, then you'll notice here we have things called VFCs, virtual fiber channel interfaces. We'll talk about those in a second. And then if we just keep moving down, you'll see things like zone names, fiber channel aliases, zone set, etc. Looks very familiar to somebody who's, who's used to doing MDS switches. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a virtual fiber channel interface. Now, if you've ever configured an Ethernet, you know, a Cisco switch, you know, to create a VLAN, a new VLAN, you just, you know, create it out of thin air. You do the same thing here. So, interface, uh, VFC9. Reason I chose 9 is this server is plugged into port 9 on the switch. I like to match up my VFCs to my physical port names. Just, you know, makes it simple. And then what you have to do is bind it to an interface. So we'll do a bind interface. Ethernet 1.9. Like I said, he's plugged into 1.9. I called it 1.9. There you go. And we'll shut it down. We'll unshut it down. All right. The next thing you need to do is uh, add this new interface to the vSAN database. So at this point, it's basically like a fiber channel port on an on a MDS switch, just like you would do there. So vSAN database, vSAN 420, interface, interface, Ethernet. Sorry, VFC 9. We're not adding Ethernet port, we're adding the VFC. Ta da! Now, if you have done this before, we'll do a show Floggy database to show the Fiber Channel login database, and you'll see we now have VFC 9, 
and the port name and node name. So if you notice the last three of the port name are 6652C, 6652C. So we know we have the right server and you'll also notice it passed through the worldwide name off the Emulex CNA makes troubleshooting real simple. At this point you just alias it and zone it and activate it. So we'll start first and I've got my configuration options already here like a good like a good chef on a cooking show I've pre-prepared some of this so we'll paste that in first we'll create an alias name FC alias ESX09 second HBA for vSAN 420 put the worldwide name in there as the member then we need to zone it we have four uh, front-end ports here for the Clarion so we'll go ahead and add that and this HBA here to that alright so zone name again so you can see ESX09 HBA2 CX4 FE vSAN 420 and the members the ESX09 alias we just created and then the front-end ports for the Clarion. Next we just add him to the active zone set so we've got the alias created we've got the zone created and now we need to add him to the active zone set so add that in so our zone set name is CRMC active zone set for fabric B again on vSAN 420 and we've added our new zone to that and now we just need to activate it. And zone set activate, and it's already inactive. So we'll do a show zone set active. And scroll, scroll, scroll. Seven, eight, and nine. And here we go. So we see here that he is active. Um, we see the worldwide names, he is it's in the zone. We see asterisks here. Asterisks are good. If you're not used to MDS zoning, that means that he sees those guys somewhere in the fabric. So if you type in something, do a show active zone set, and there's no star, say, next to the this guy, uh, usually that means that you've you know, either typed one in wrong or he's just not showing up in the Fiber Channel login database. So go look and see. You know, I did this the other day where I accidentally flipped HPAs between Fabric A and Fabric B. Neither of them showed up here, and that was why. So at this point... We are now zoned through the fabric, so if we come back over here and do a rescan, give it one second, and it's completed, and you'll see we have DGC, Data General Corporation, the old original creator of the Clarion there, with LUN0. This is known as LUN-Z. It basically means he sees that Clarion on the back end, but we haven't we haven't you know given that guy access to any storage. So we'll go over to the Clarion, take a look at connectivity sort and down and right here you'll see we now have ESX09 nice feature in vSphere is it already registers and logs itself into the Clarions on the back end you don't have to install the Navi agent or anything like that anymore so you know takes a step out of it you can see here that automatically put itself in so that's good now we just have to add it to a storage group right click connect hosts wait for the list to pop up okay ESX09 add it to the storage group and hit OK adding multiple host yes that's fine connect host yes that's fine and operation successful fantastic so now we jump back over rescan again give it one second And there we are. Four targets. Remember, we had four front-end fiber connections. We have 11 lines in that storage group, so we have a grand total of 44 paths that we can get to the storage. So if we go back over here, you'll see we now have access back to our data stores again. So that's it. You know, if once you go in and enable those first couple commands on the Nexus, everything else is basically MDS zoning. So don't let you know, don't let a Nexus come in. You know, freak you out if you're a storage admin because there's really nothing else to it. If you like Fabric Manager, you can do it all in Fabric Manager. You know, just FYI, if you're a Cisco switch guy, um, these guys operate just like a normal switch. So you can do a show run, interface, say E11. Uh, he's shut down, but I mean switch port mode trunk, uh, switch port access VLAN whatever, standard trunk, standard VLAN, standard everything commands. So if you get a Cisco switching guy and a Cisco MDS guy sitting in the same room, you guys can configure one of these no problem at all. 
But that concludes the demo. Thank you.